here I am in Singapore, and I'm happy to get myself a lucky cat. Here you go, Madeline. Oh my God, it's Bobby Tonelli. What are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, that's a great question. Let's go find out. Thanks for the cat. You're See welcome. Ya. Do you think we need a G63? Absolutely. I don't think we do. Oh, really? I don't think we do. Tell me why. And the, the Nikon F actually almost put Leica out of business. But when you hit, yeah. it is one of the most beautiful renderings out there. Yeah, right. In With that said, do we need a Z7 anymore? APS-C camera, do we need it or no? Oh, man. Because <laughs> Singapore is very modern, as you probably have seen. Yes. From yes. the hotels and the buildings and the shops. Yes. We're super ultra modern, and this is kind of more of an old school vibe. It's good to see that this arc, some of this architecture has still survived. Yeah, we got a lot of uh, British influence here. So yes. as an American living here, I've had to adjust. I'm getting used to dry sense of humor. Because, you know, <laughs> as Americans, we have this very, like, crass, sarcastic, over the top sense of humor. Now I'm getting used to being more dry. dry and yeah, all right. be British. We'll, try, British. And we'll try and work on that yeah. tonight, some, <laughs> some dryness. What, what are these? These are durians. Oh, you never tried durian. I have not. Durian, you only get in a few parts in, in Southeast Asia. He's right. never. He's from Australia, never tried durian before, That's ever. It. it looks like a porcupine. It's not, or you open it up and there's a seat. Okay. But the smell is very unique. Okay. You come here with your wife and your kids, right? right? Yes, yes. They're gonna smell you all the way home to Australia. Great. From here. Let's not do that because we're okay. leaving tomorrow on a plane at 8 a.m. Okay. So it's, it's aromatic, isn't it? Oh, oh it is, it's aromatic. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, um, obviously, we are a photography channel here. Let's yeah. talk about what, what do you got there? What are you toting tonight? Well, we you know, Matt, you know, I've been watching your channel and you, the, the <laughs> love that you have for the Nikon ZF or oh, yeah. ZF, yeah. I should say, I have uh, decided to pull this one out. Nice. The more traditional all black, but yes. of course, now I get to see the Hermes edition, as I'm going to call there it. We, go. we can swap. You want to? Yeah. Well, you can have a oh, play. Oh, hello with the plana. Yeah. Sorry, a little flex here, don't we? <laughs> yeah. A little flex. I tell you, I had to carry it. So flex and also a flex. It looks really good on this camera. Yeah. This orange. The nice thing about the orange, it doesn't look. It's not like a bright, bright orange. No. It's got like a burnt orange. Very classy. Yeah. It's very Hermes. Sunset. Sunset. They call it. Sunset. Nick on calling it. See, I need to get a color. I, I have to get a color ZF. Yeah. See, I mean, or I get the red stripe put down here, but everybody's doing that right now. Oh, are they really? They're doing the red stripe. I'm on the ZF forums on Facebook. They're putting the red stripe on it. Okay. like F3. Nice. Yeah, but this is gorgeous. I like, thank you very much. This is gorgeous. Thank you very much. So tell me, uh, you've gone black. Gone black. You might get a color. But I might go back. You know what they say. Sometimes yeah, you can't. Here. You yeah. can't. Yeah. Well, once you've gone black, <laughs> you can't go back. That's what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> On cameras, it might be a bit different. Oh, uh, um, aren't we talking about cameras, Bobby? Um, no, all kidding aside, I love the blue, though. I actually love the blue. Yeah, the blue was a beautiful so color. So I'm thinking about maybe one day going for the blue if I can. You're a man who has a few cameras. What do you What do you like to photograph? You know, I learned, I started learning photography like with street photography because I kind of uh, got into the world of Leica. Yep. So obviously with the Leica M and the rangefinder vibe, I was getting really into that. Yep. And then as I started you know, progressing and trying different cameras and obviously reviewing them, I started getting more into portrait photography than wildlife and, and uh, you know, all different kind of things. And especially when you get to play with Nikon, I mean, you know, wildlife and sports is like the DNA, you know what I mean? So I really started playing a lot more with that with the D6 as when I first got to review that years back and then obviously yeah, well. the, the other cameras, the DA50 and everything else. So. Yeah, it's just never stopped. Yeah. And now you got a Z8 as well. I got the Z8 right now, which is an awesome camera. Yeah. I have the Z9, which is, the Z9 is an amazing camera, yes. right? But it was, obviously a lot of people said it was just a little bit, bit too big to carry around. Sure. Because Nikon, their Z mount lenses are very robust. I mean, it's an interesting statement when you think, uh, you know, mm. you reviewed the D6. Yeah. And the Z9 is actually smaller. Yes. And the Z9 is actually far more capable. Right. And the only reason we think it's small, it's too big, mm is because of, say, a Sony A1. Right, mirrorless world has changed everything. Yeah, so it's basically, you know, if you look at the R3 and you look at the Z9, mm. that's kind of a flagship as we've always known them. True. And and the, and the A1's kind of mixed that up, hasn't it? It has, it has really. But I mean, I think the Z9 really, it gave the A1, I mean, while it didn't have the same 50 megapixels frame per second in RAW, but we already know that when you go at that speed, most pros are going to be shooting probably JPEG, I think, anyway, to get those yeah. photos out. Yeah. But I mean, I think what the Z9 offered was a very capable hybrid camera. It was a really true hybrid. AK yeah. and RAW. Yeah. You know, you got 4K 120. Yeah. You've got, you know, a ton of functionality on the video side of it, which we never saw really from Nikon before. 
they were always teasing it with the Z6, Z7. Yep. But then with the Z9, they're like, that's it. Here, here's the kitchen sink. Well, I Take threw it. it all, didn't I? Threw it all I in there. Threw it camera. all. Yeah. Now, I mean, obviously, to do a cinema camera, I don't know if that would work necessarily because the cinema cameras now it's becoming more hybrids. Yep. So I think they'll obviously keep pushing more of the video side of it. Yep. Um, and I'm seeing a lot more people adapting now, getting you know cinema lenses, getting Z adapters, and putting on the cameras and trying it out and exploring. And I think. Yep. The uh, opportunities are very interesting for it. I've got a friend who works in one of the big camera stores uh -huh. and, and he says the Z9 is fantastic, but it's the form factor. You know, the real cinema guys, they want they want a cinema shaped box. Yeah. So, and well, I kind of say, oh, but you can rig it. You can put a cage on it. You can do all that stuff. You can, yeah, you can. But uh -huh. they want that traditional box to really rig it and to make it feel like that they put onto a gimbal or whatever they're going to put it on and build it out that way. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens with it. But I have to say the camera, that has gotten most people are the ones we have on us right now. They I got know. most people so excited is the ZF. It's bananas. It is. When the ZFC came out, I don't know about you, how you felt about it. I was like, obviously they were teasing it with the, the 28 2.8 full frame lens. And you're going, come on, why are you doing a full frame lens on an APS-C yep. camera? Yep. As the, the, you know, the, the, the one, two combo. Yeah. I said, it's gotta be coming because there's, their history is so illustrious when it comes from film photography, at least I'm learning about, you know, I've learned over the years, the Nikon F and then the F2, then, you know what I mean? Just et cetera, et cetera, Absolutely. et cetera, you know? And the, the Nikon F actually almost put Leica out of business. The SLR uh, really almost, that really hurt Leica a lot. I didn't know that. The rangefinder was really that M3 uh -huh. at that time, M2, M3, then all of a sudden, boom, here comes an SLR from Nikon and it changed the game. So as a Leica user and yeah. lover, yeah. how, does, how does the ZF, mess with your head I mean you've got one so. I mean I got one it's I enjoy it I enjoy them both I mean this yeah, has yeah. a lot more I mean it's not like they have to be canceling each other out they don't as no. a matter of fact is it, you're celebrating photography history you're yeah. celebrating history with this camera yeah and the FM2 obviously it's designed off that some people say the FE2 I mean all the cameras kind of look very similar so there will be people in the comment section below that will say a lot of different things yeah but <laughs> it's a celebration of photography and what these camera brands have done in the past to actually elevate them Yep. And that's where the ZF sort of culminates, in my personal opinion, you know. So when I look at it and I use it, it does remind me of using like a, a Leica M in the sense. It has yeah. that same sort of that throwback, yeah. but with modern technology. With the t that tactility, yeah. the flat form factor, the dials on the top. I mean, we've seen, we're, we're seeing that from Fujifilm, but never, but Fujifilm's history is not as like this. Plus, yeah. not full frame. Not full frame. That's a real... Yeah. Like it's it's Leica and it's the ZF. Yeah, and subject detection and manual focus, which we've never seen. <laughs> yeah. Some of the features specific to the ZF, mm. which are designed to make it slower and manual and yeah. Well, talk to me about what you love about it. I, I mean, mean, you've uh, made a great video, which well, everyone, there's a link right there. They uh, should go watch. You're very, very kind. You're very kind. No, honestly, the subject detection and manual focus is something that I think a lot of people that want to adapt vintage lenses yep. or any lens for that matter, they can enjoy because always the hard part with manual focus is the focus peaking, then zooming in, getting that critical focus, you know what I mean? And sometimes it takes a long time, especially on the cameras, you have to move that crosshair up to the point you want to be at, make sure the eyes in focus, and your subject is tired, wants to go home. Models are just going to sit there for hours. With the subject detection, to go right to the eye or the face, speeds up the process and it just makes it fun and everybody thinks what's interesting they think it's the lens but it's the sensor it's from the sensor that it's doing it yeah because that's the comment i get the most in the video is like oh can you do it with a, a leica lens or can you do it with a, a, a third party lens that doesn't have electronic con uh, contacts yes works with anything everything yeah it's 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 really one of the tech this uh, technology that i hope other manufacturers put into the camera but it's here in this and you know what with the popularity of this what's the next one they're going to come up with well, it's a great question, and let's well let's speculate. This yeah. is the speculating part speculating of this vid part, yeah. video. I suppose the next step is more res. I mean, the next step is stepping closer to an M11, isn't it? Or I mean, something. you could, you could, because right now Nikon's kind of capped at 45, but I'm yep. guessing that cap is going to end with the Z8, and after whatever they come out with next, or you know, down the road, or a sequel to it, or to the Z9 will be a 60 megapixel, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, look, my feeling on 45 is it's a, it's a real sweet spot for it is 8K video, yeah, speed, yeah, and it's 45 or 50, like they're actually very close to each other. Mm. 
and when you go to 61, if we look at the Sony A7R5, mm. we know it's a slow sensor. It has to do 8K cropped, so natively for that sensor. Yep. And the technology is not there yet. And we also have the issue of diffraction. Sure. With all of the kind of negatives that exist today, mm. I actually, I have a feeling mm. flagships yep. are going to stay at the 45 to 50. 50. Like if you look yep. at the R5, yep. it's 45, the Z8, Z9. Sure. And do we really need more when we're shooting 20, 30 frames per second? No, we don't. Not, not, not at that kind of burst mode. There's no way you need that. And so I kind of think then you come along with your Z7 or your Leica M11 yeah. or your A7R, whatever, yeah. four or five, and those cameras yeah. are slow. Yes. But that we, when we say slow... It's still not slow. It's still my... I mean... It's, it's faster it's, than what we had still, like five years ago. That's right. It still might be nine frames a second at 60 megapixels. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think there can be that differentiation. And there should be. Honestly, it should be. I, I'm happy with 45, to be frank with you. And yeah. I, have, I play around with the GFX 100 too. Oh, wow. So if I want 100 megapixels, then there I've got 100 megapixels. Exactly. There, and then you've got cropping power for days. And you're, if you're doing portrait editing, good luck. You know, every poor shot. So there's <laughs> another speculation. We didn't speculate much on the next ZF. Yeah. But I, well, I, So I think a higher res one. Have you got any speculations? Higher res one, and I think they're probably going to dive into the F the F series of lens of cameras, like the F3. Ah, uh, so more more body shapes. More body shapes because look, Ooh. there's a there's a, a big history yes, there. I and agree. you see a lot of people keep putting the red stripe here. Yeah. I'm on that ZF form and they keep putting that red stripe. Wow. You know is Nikon's watching this going, if we come up with a digital F3, 45 yeah. megapixels. Yeah. Like a Z8, but is it F3? Yep. Oh, come on. People will buy that thing up and like crazy. This I, I want this top plate brass, dials brass, all, they're already brass right there. Yeah. Give me the leather, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I, I, I put on my Tim Cook hat at this yeah. point and go, yeah. we don't want to make too many skews. No. You, well, know, you know how Apple only want to make, you know, there's one, there's one Ultra, that's it. And, it you, and it'll be that way for ages. But here's the question then. With that said, do we need a Z7 anymore? No, yes, because I think it will be the A7R5. You think that'll be the high resolution? Absolutely. One? So the so the Z8 and the Z9 will be 45. Yep. The Z7 will be the 60. That's what, that's what I think. think. That's okay. what I think will happen. Do you think we need a Z63? Absolutely. I don't think we do. Oh really? I don't think we do. Tell me why. SKUs. Oh, so it's the Tim Cook hat. I think so. I think because we well, we got Z5, Z5, Z30, ZFC, Z6, Z7, Z8, Z9, ZF. At one point, something's got to give. Well, I, I think the Z6 and the Z6 II get retired. Yeah. And it'll just supersede it. I don't think they'll really do a Sony, and it'll just be a matter of emptying the channel. But what would you want to see in a Z63 if there was one? Well, this is essentially Z63. So that means it's going to be more. Yeah. Now let's, for example, take Nikon's closest competitor, which is probably Sony. Yeah. And what's an A7 IV? That's a 33 megapixel, 6K machine. Why not be in that sort of space? But, so you, know, but you know what's interesting about this, the A7 IV? And JP, he, he's a, he does DP work. Yep. Would it, are, would it be fair to say that the A7R5 with the AI chip for autofocusing, when that came out, even though it's more expensive, trumped the A7IV? Sure. Because all of a sudden now, it's like it's kind of like neither no, I, here nor there. I hear what you're saying. I, 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 what I mean is megapixels. Okay, okay. Not, if you put a, draw a line halfway between a ZF and a Z8, hmm. what do you get spec-wise? Yeah. And I feel like that's a Z6 III. Okay. I think it'll be X Speed 7, so it'll have super fast focus. Yeah. It'll have this crazy IBIS that we've got now, and it'll have all the brilliant stuff that a Z8, a Z9, and a ZF, ZF has. But to me, the only question is, is it going to be stacked and shutterless, or is it, or, or not? And that's the tough question because of the price point. Like, so the Z8, which we're shooting on, yeah. Z8, $39.99 US. Yeah needs to come in maybe two and a half, somewhere between two and a half and three. Mm. Can they do a 33 MP stacked? But this is where this is where my question is. So if that comes in 33 stacked, the Z7 is, what, what price point is the Z7 going to be? But for it's a different camera. It's for a different market. It, it, the Z7 III will go higher MP, so it might be 60. Okay. So 33 versus 60. 
clear mm. delineation. It's slow. It still has a shutter. Yeah. Because it's designed for a different. It's designed for the landscape, or the architectural, the portraitures, the still photography, okay. you know, all a wedding, even if you want. Okay. I mean, look. I mean, you're giving valid arguments. I mean, when you say that, when you talk about it this way, there is a valid argument to be had. I'm just wondering, are we at this stage now that in 2023, even though this is a fantastic low light beast, we're taking images even here. The street's great. I mean, really good uh, ISO control, low light. It's fantastic. But are we getting to the point out that our higher megapixel cameras are doing equally as good in lower light? That do we need 24? Do we need 36 anymore? Do you think that's, or 33? Uh, I, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Because now we're able to, to play around with the video side of it a bit more, right? Yeah, I, I think it's just market segmentation. Okay. So okay. You, you literally do it so that the ZF is, I mean the ZF's 19.99, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, and, and, and it's, it's, true. But it's bananas. It's bananas what this camera does. So awesome. at two and a half to three, you the Z6 III is essentially a Z8, but with slightly lower pixels. Okay. And it's, I think some you of sold it's, me. You I sold think me. some of it's marketing as opposed to. True, how it's, how it's positioned. You, you sold me on that. Watch out for the roach by your shoe. Welcome to Singapore. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Well, he's, he's a, a friend. He's, he's a, a friend. We paid extra for him. He's big. We paid extra for the. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can ride them here. Yeah, so it's good. <laughs> okay, but um, you sold me actually on it. Now yeah. you sold me on it. Okay, based on what you're saying, then okay, the Z63. Okay, I'm sold. APS-C camera. Do we need it or no? I don't think we do anymore. Uh, uh, look, because you know why the megapixels have gone so high that even if you go to, if we get a 60 megapixel, you could do a DX crop. You've got plenty of megapixels, far more than an ABC. Well, the Z9, here comes another giant horse roach. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> there we go. Hi, guys. How are you? It's a party. He's, you know, go he's going somewhere. He's going somewhere. He's looking for the bar. He's, he's looking for the nightclub. Yeah. Um, yeah, your Z8 and your Z9 are 19 megapixels. Yeah. And your D500, which is the famous cropped yeah. Nikon, is 21. Yeah. So it's essentially the same. Right. Now, do you want to spend three thousand nine hundred ninety-nine when I think that camera was two and a half when it came out? Right. And that's the only argument that's kind of left. Sure. Is that that fifteen hundred dollars? I kind of think we live in a world now where SKUs. You know, how many SKUs can you have? As we've talked about, the, sure. Tim, the Tim Cook app. True. Sure. And yeah, so personally, I kind of feel with the collision of technology and price point. Mm. The difference between a D500 and a Z8, oh. which, which give you the same outcome if you go to DX on a Z8, yeah, and it's a $1,500 US difference or something in that order. Yeah. But what happens if you get a Z63 that essentially is a Z8 but it's lower megapixels? So you get 33 megapixels, say, running at the same speed as a Z8. And then the only complaint is, is you're not getting the stretched glass. But Nikon's making all of these long lenses that are smaller than they've ever been. True. They're lighter than they've ever been. They're some of the best glass we've ever seen. And that 180 to 600 is an amazing lens. It is, it's amazing. So if you want to kind of jump in at a consumer level, I think it's something like 1999. Yeah, like it it's is. affordable. It's very, very affordable, extremely affordable. So imagine if you got that and a Z63 and the whole kit comes in under five grand US and you're getting 33 megapixels. You don't and, need it. And you can whack on a teleconverter. Yeah, you can. You can still go to DX, something like 12 or 15 yeah. megapixels. That was plenty for most people years back. I kind of feel like you're so close to being what those other cameras were that it's hard to justify. True. It's just so close. True, true. But it doesn't change the fact that there are real users out there who, f who feel like they want a D500 replacement. I, I don't know how big that market is. That's the thing, I'm not too sure either. I mean, yeah. one could say, well, look at Fujifilm, for example, and say, well, they have a pretty big market, but then they have a whole lineup of APS-C lens where Nikon doesn't. Yeah. Everything's those sort of like those, you know, variable aperture zoom lenses. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing really that screams prime. Yeah. You and, know what I mean? And to build out a Fuji set of lenses, they've yeah. got to build what they've just built in full frame. Yeah, which is a lot of money. And I think in real terms, there, there just isn't the market for it when you're up against Olympus and you're up against Fuji in APS-C already. There you go. No Why? more APS-C. Let it go. It's, it's hard, it's hard. From a logical perspective, it's hard. It is, it is. It is hard, it's hard. But actually, after using the planar, I probably wouldn't even go for the 58 Noct anymore. That one, at least. No, I mean, the, 80, the 85 1.2. It's such a gorgeous lens. And this. Yeah. Are still cheaper than that, and they're 
I mean, optically wise, you're going to have a hard time to tell the difference. Nikon have said this is knocked level yeah. without it being 0.09. So it's the same level of optical brilliance, yeah. but it's just not 0.95. Which is fine. Which, of course, it'd be, you know, freaking... It's already big, yeah, yeah. Imagine that. I mean, autofocus is helpful. It is, especially in that lens. Yeah. I, try, I tried it, and it's just a... Oh, you've a, tried it? I tried it. It's a Talk about it. You tried it? Oh, you've never tried it before? No. Oh. They're, they don't have one in Australia, to the oh, really? best of my understanding. It is. I tried it a few years ago when it first launched here in Singapore. They passed okay. it to me in the Pelican briefcase that it comes yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. It is, optically, it's superior to the, the Leica Noctilux. But again, the Noctilux was made, I think it was in 1998 or 2000. Yeah. The one, the 0.95 versus this one that was made in like 2018, 2019. So optically it's gonna be a superior, but it's a much larger lens. The one thing I'll say about Nikon cameras in terms of focus speaking with manual focus is that it's not 100% accurate. You really need to zoom in to nail critical focus, yeah. especially at 0.95. You look at, you see it's all, the whole display could be bright red and you think you're in focus. When you look at the image, you're out. You yeah. really gotta magnify yeah, you've got it. To, you've gotta use the magnify yeah. feature. Some, I, some cameras are much more finite with it. Yeah, interesting. Nikon's a little bit off on it, but I think that could be fixed in a firmware update, not an issue at all. But with the 0.95, you really do notice it. Yeah. But when you hit, yeah. it is one of the most beautiful renderings out there yeah, right. in photography. Okay. Yeah. Nikon Australia, I need to, I need you to get one in so I can have a play with it. Oh, it, they, they should have one. They should have I, one. Surely. Someone in the office in Australia has got that yeah. lens. They're yeah. probably taking it home and using it and they don't yeah. want to tell anybody. Yeah, that's exactly what's <laughs> happening. That's exactly what's happening. <laughs> as a professional photographer though, do you, have you always been Nikon or have you all tried other brands as well? So when I very first started, I had a Pentax. Ah. I had a Pentax and then I bought an FM2, I think it was in 1992. Okay. But I was that was actually like a, at the time it was a collectible and I was using a modern Pentax, which was called, geez, I've got this green light on me, which was called the Pentax SFXN. Okay. Try say that after a couple of tequilas. Uh, no, SFXN. Yes. Great camera, not really. And that was, <laughs> it was just when autofocus, that's how old I am, was starting to be a thing. Yeah. Eh, 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 eh. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and then in 1997, I got the Nikon F5. Ah, yes. And that, so that was film. And from then on, I didn't look back. And it was the ergonomics. So I went into a store. I had no horse in any game. Yeah. Went into a store and picked up the Canon and the Nikon. So they said, oh, the Canon's got faster focus. I'm like, I don't really, I don't really care yeah. about faster focus. Like I'm doing people and landscapes and right. that sort of thing. And it was ergonomics. Now, the Canon, it has a wheel. Yes. Right? Yep. The Nikon, it still has these two things here. Now the Nikon, you can use one-handed. Mm. You can change those settings one-handed. The Canon, Canon cannot. you cannot. No. Because, because your palm lifts away and you're gonna drop the camera. And that is what made me not buy a Canon. Interesting. As simple as that. It was as simple as that. Interesting, because that was an interesting time. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a was a professional photographer as well, and he was a Nikon guy. Yeah. But he jumped to the Canon side because of the autofocus. Yeah, well, there you go. But I know a lot of people were back and forth. Now I owned a F5 a couple of years back. I bought nice. one from a secondhand store. They're like four or five hundred bucks now. They're yeah. so cheap for yeah. what they are. Yeah. It's built like a tank. Yeah. I mean, and it was a really nice camera, but it was large for today's, you know, and, and yeah. No, so I thought, I mean, big. personally for me, F6. If I can find a good F6, good price. I'll get an F6. You know, it's not as big as the F5. It's not as well built as the F5, but it's got that t t technology. What are they priced at now? You can find a pretty good uh, version of it for about 12, 1400 USD. If you get a box, wow. maybe a little bit more. So they're still holding their value quite well. Versus the F5, which is like four or 500. Yeah. But again, they're hard to come by. Well, it's a collectible. Yeah, it is a collectible. And it camera. always was a collectible. It's the last last 35 millimeter camera yeah. from, from uh, the guns. So. What do you think? What do you think so far of Singapore? I am I mean, we've it. seen alleyways. I love it. Welcome you to Singapore. We see yeah. alleyways and rats <laughs> and, and roaches. And yeah, we have. <laughs> no, we saw some lights and we saw that. Yeah. What's the fruit? Durian. Durian. You didn't try it. Durian. No, durian. Well, you told me I would smell bad and all the way home. We're going to be on a plane for six and a half, seven hours tomorrow. So. It sticks on your fingers, yeah. It's, it's not, oh, yeah. does it really? Yeah, it does. It does stick on your fingers. You have to wash I don't, I don't think Dora would like it. Probably not. No, but I love Singapore. I mean, we haven't been here long enough. Every day is a good day by the pool in That's Singapore, true. isn't true. it? Until it rains. And they have to get you up because no, of the No, I mean... <laughs> Like the kids, the kids get upset. I don't mind so much. Yeah, yeah, the kids yeah. get very upset. Of course, yeah. Bobby, I just want to say thank you so much for showing me just a very small snippet of Singapore. Yeah, no, it's been fun, man. It's been fun. I mean, we we got to get together. I got to come to Melbourne. 
You got it. Show me Melbourne a little I'll, bit. I want to. Yeah. And um, thank you for sharing your journey, your Nikon journey, your Leica journey. My pleasure. But really, you're journeying with everybody, and that's oh. what I love about what you're doing. Oh. And your channel, let's not forget your channel. Well, appreciate it very much, Matt, and you too as well. You too as well. You got to jump onto Bobby's channel. It's quality stuff. And here in Singapore, pretty much everything goes across your desk. <laughs> so that is awesome. I'm quite fortunate. I I'm might have fortunate. to ask Bobby for some uh, some pointers on how to, you know, how to grease the wheels of the universe. But anyway, <laughs> if anybody's got any questions for Bobby in the comments below, of course, please check out his awesome channel. He's been doing reviewing, what, five, six, seven years. Yeah, about that. But now he's gone out on his own. We love it that he's gone out on his own. And uh, please, all your thoughts on what we've been up to. I know this has been an opus, but it's been fun walking around in the very hot. Yes, and humid. Sorry. Yes. We'll just get out of the way for a sec. It's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, please don't forget to subscribe. Please like and share. And Bobby, any final words to say? No, Matt, go? Matt, just thank you so much for reaching out to me and, and we got a chance to talk. And even off camera, we just had this chance to bond and it was yeah. great. It's been awesome. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. Good Thank on you, Bobby. You so Let's it. do Appreciate this again it. sometime. Yeah, for 2024. Sure. Let's do the it. Next edition. Uh, you know, maybe we can do some remote stuff. We'll see how we go. All right. All right. And I, and I hear you have to check out Bobby's now released laptop, M M3 laptop. Which is, which one did the you Pro M3 Max. The Max. The Max. With the Max. Bobby with the Max. All right. <laughs> let's get out of here. I wish I knew.